Hey there, it's Boots Owen here. This is uh, Beko WM85135LW. It's quite a nice washing machine, I reckon, but it's got some kind of a fault with the motor. The machine seems to do everything. There it is on its side. The machine seems to do everything except turn the laundry over, so everything points to motor fault. When I got it, it had no brushes, which was a logical uh, reason why the motor wouldn't work. But I put new brushes in it and still nothing happens. It's clear that someone's been in there before because the brushes were removed before I got it. But what's not clear is whether or not this motor unit works. So I'm going to take it out. I think it's been out before because one of the four screws that holds it on, this one up here, is missing. So I'll take it out. It's just a big Torx screwdriver that you need to take it out. So hopefully you can just release it by hand and uh, do a bench test on the motor. Yeah, these are just coming off with a big screwdriver. Not relatively big. The machine's obviously not plugged in and I've taken the back off it so that I can get in here. And pull off that motor belt as well. Drive belt and then the last screw is in here. So I've got a works bit in a socket here. That's not gonna help, is it? Let's try a smaller driver. There we go. Now that's loosened, I won't be able to do it with the screwdriver. Nope, for whatever reason it won't do it, so back to the socket. It's loose enough to remove by hand. It's just as efficient, inefficient to do it with the thing in, but it's a little bit more satisfying because you can hear the ratchet clicking. I tied that clip on with a cable tie. Pull this connector block apart. Go and right, okay. Just slide out. There it is. That's the motor. Let's have a look at that. It's an Arcelic Arcelic 28356 It's pretty much just a standard universal motor, no pin out or anything there. There you go. If you're so inclined, let's bring it over to the bench. Right, here it is up on the bench. What can we start testing? Well, I've got a multimeter. So let's just see if we're getting power through the brushes or continuity through the brushes. So let's check for continuity and that's working. So then which one is the brushes? Well, you see the white cable there is coming to the other brush and that one's there red. So red to white should give us continuity. So red and white. Yeah, that's giving us something on the multimeter there. And earth is green and yellow. Two yellows are to a taco on the end of the motor. So we're left with one, two, three, four, five other wires, which are probably windings for different speeds or different torques or something like that. So if you want to check out how I'm going to do this, you want to understand what I'm doing here, go and look at my other videos on how to wire a washing machine motor. To some degree, this is just me guessing at which of the coils might work. That could be an issue. Uh, on another level, I've done it before. So let's say power on, zero volts. I've got it on a Variac. Nothing happening there. So that means it's not the right combination. Right. Let's check for continuity on those coils because that's something we can do. If we had continuity between some of them, we might. Yeah, nothing there. Nothing there. Nothing there. Yeah, something. Okay, so there's something across those ones. So let's plug the neutral into. Well, not the neutral, but one of the cables into that one there. Maybe it'll go now. So the motor seems okay. Seems okay in that it's working. It's working in one configuration and the brushes are okay. What I don't know is 
should there be continuity across any of these other combinations. So we can look again and see what we can see. So there's a blue and a blue. Is there any continuity across them? Yeah, we're getting something there. So we can just stick those across the blues. Just see what happens there. If I plug it in again, bring up the power. So that's working, um, that's a different combination. What else could I check? Power's off again. I'm saying that as much for me as for you. Um, we check those two, I think. Yeah, you see there's another combination, so I can put it onto that. And just see what's going on. Let's see, turn up the power. So it looks like this motor's okay to some level. Like I'm not this is no by no means a full test. It looks like it's okay. Putting it back in the machine won't do anything, so there is a problem somewhere between the motor and the control board. Now on this machine, there's a control board. Let's have a look at the machine. If we can. So on this machine motor's down the bottom here, and there's the cables coming to the motor. If you remember those colours there, white, brown, pink, red, grey, orange. So it, it, it does appear to be right. So earth is in the right place and two greens, which are the same colour, presumably go to taco, but they're not matching colours going up through the machine. Which is interesting, I guess. Um, and we think black and in this case, black and red would be the brushes. No, orange and black was it? Would be the brushes. I can't remember now. Um, so that's like that's been it's been treated quite roughly at some point because that's all been pulled off it. Let's turn the machine around and have a look up at the top. I've got it sitting up on another machine. So in here is one board. And then in the back of the fascia is another board. So what I think I'll do is I'll put the motor back in and start taking the top apart. I've done it before where I've sliced my finger open, fitting a belt back onto a washing machine. Sometimes these edges here are very sharp. So gloves help, but not as much as just being very careful. What I've done is I've put the motor belt onto the motor first I brought it around the top as far as I can and I'm just easing it on with my fingers and that's it it's on it's okay so I'll bring the machine down and uh, we'll have a look at these boards on top okay prepared to be somewhat underawed by my skills in removing the front of this machine I don't, I've never done this before so I don't really know what I'm doing let's get to it that's a rusty old Phillips screw up here and there's a couple of screws up here, I can see. There's plastic tabs, there's one there, that's it. If I want to come out, I've lost my screw. That's it, you can see how rusty that is, maybe. It's anyways, it'll go back in. That was easy enough to take off. I don't know that this has been off before, which is helpful. And this board's held on with screws again. A couple that I can see, maybe more. So looking at this, there's a ribbon cable or some kind of a flat, flat cable. Flat cables over here. So I presume there's two boards, one in front of another. There we go, flip those over, maybe. What's holding this one in? A couple of clips on this side. 
Maybe that's it. One more here. There we go. Now Okay, we're still attached on these cables here. That's okay though, it should still flip out. There we go. Right. Lots of carbon dust on the board. Doesn't mean anything's broken particularly. There's some numbers for you if you're into that kind of thing. Could you check this? We had a tumble dryer recently where one of the contactors, one of the relays, wasn't working. We've got four relays there, one, two, three, and four. They're marked up RL1 to RL4. Those two diodes are pretty dusty. Is that a choke coil in there, I think, or something? I don't know. I'm making it up. It's not a power issue because the board is getting power and lighting up this uh, display or these momentary switches they all work it's just whatever sending out to the motor so then let's have a think about that oh that's helpful so stator stator it says it on it stator high stator low stator calm rotor rotor tack oh there's rotor and l3 i don't know what they are there three stators two rotors and two tacos so, we should be able to energize the end of the cables here, and that should go to the motors. There's no burning or any tracing, you know, bad traces down here. So I wonder if it is just that one of these guys is out, but if one of those was out, it wouldn't be... I'm just looking at, trying to look in at this little guy here. That is a... Four K four three two one. Trying to see, it looks a bit corroded. You can barely see in there. I'm wondering if that's got some functions. Where's he going? It's coming from here, going to here. Here is various resistors and whatnot. Don't know if that's it. Complicated board this because you've got a load of surface mount on this side and on the other side you've got the old style through mount Where are these getting their power from so you've got a little diode little jump cable and then the Relays I don't know I might post this video as it is and if anybody has any comments on this or a particular fault to this machine. This is a WM85135LW I might have a look and see if I can get a board for this What's the name on this board then? FU2ZZZ34105324 G15BO1 T01 Oh, part number, there we go 284385010 284385010 Maybe a board's cheaper, dear I, haven't, I don't know if I've looked might have. Typically boards are expensive, but sometimes on eBay things come and go quite reasonably priced. I suspect it's a board issue. I, I suspect, let's say from these three here stators, stators go, yeah, so each stator goes to, two, three goes over to here, yeah, each stator winding goes to a relay, so there are different relays for different speeds. Interesting. Maybe one's forwards, one's backwards, or something like that. Interesting, but not very helpful. Any questions or comments, leave them below. Thanks for watching. See you later.